Hello, my name is Farish, and I'm a California-based developer. And in this video, we're going to talk about what is whiteboarding, which is part of the technical interview process. And it can be a intimidating part too. But with this video and other content from Code Academy, hopefully we can ease your concerns and help you along the way. Let's get started. To start things off, I'm going to cover what is whiteboarding and lightly touch on why it is important. Then I want to go into the process of a whiteboarding interview. Lastly, I'm going to give you a couple tips, non-coding related, on how to practice for your whiteboarding interview. So let's get started. So what is whiteboarding? Well, whiteboarding is a form of torture used during job interviews. The candidate is forced to code algorithms that they will never use on the job on a whiteboard in front of other people, causing the candidate to experience a sensation of inadequacy. Now I'm joking here. So what really is a whiteboard interview? Well, it is the portion of your tech job interview meant to test your communication and problem solving skills. You'll be given a situation or a task and of course a whiteboard. And you're gonna use this whiteboard to work out your code and explain your solution. So why whiteboarding? Well, it's used by a lot of large and established tech companies. The most famous one in this interview space being Google as part of the hiring process. And they have you do this to show your ability to reason, explain, and solve a problem. When working in teams, these skills are crucial to successful code implementation. If you're asked to add new features to an existing code base, where or how would you start? Whiteboarding is a way to demonstrate these skills. So what exactly happens during the whiteboarding portion of the interview process? Well, let's talk about that. So let's talk about what to expect. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna be in a room and of course there'll be a whiteboard and there'll be an interviewer or interviewers. And they're gonna give you a problem to solve. And as I mentioned earlier, it'll be most likely an algorithm, but sometimes it could be system design or a real world problem. Every company is different. And the goal is to not only solve the problem, but to show to the interviewers that you can visualize and verbalize out the situation. And we accomplish this by going through the process. The first step in the process is to clarify the problem. And to start this, the first thing you need to do is to say the interviewer's question out loud in your own words. Then based on their response, ask a clarifying question. And during this back and forth communication, create assumptions and then ask questions built upon those assumptions. And your questions should continue until your assumptions lead to a mutual agreement on the scope of the problem. And at this point, you should be ready to move on to the next step. So now that you have clarified the problem, the next step in the process should be to create inputs that will lead you to a solution. Then once those inputs are created, you should also create the outputs you expect the function to produce. So for example, you have this problem. You need to merge two sorted arrays of numbers to a new sorted output array. So the first thing you need to do is to create a happy path, which is what you expect to be the most common scenario based on your earlier clarifying questions. And in this case, it is two sorted arrays of unique numbers. And while doing this, you have to be aware of the edge cases which are the uncommon and unexpected inputs that could potentially break your function. In this scenario, the edge case is duplicate numbers in the two input arrays. When encountering an edge case, go back to asking clarifying questions and maybe making new assumptions. For example, in this scenario, you should ask, should I expect duplicate numbers from the two sorted arrays? And if the answer is yes, you should then ask how should they be handled in the output? And if the answer is no, take some time to consider other potential edge cases here. And if you feel you have all your bases covered 
it's time to move on to the next step. Now that you have clarified the problem and have your inputs, it is time to start outlining the solution. So going back to the problem I mentioned earlier, this is a partial outline of the solution using pseudocode. And while you're writing this, you should still communicate your thought process. This gives the interviewer an opportunity to interact and maybe give you some hints and suggestions if you're showing that you're a little bit stuck. Also, if you feel unsure or confused, there is nothing wrong to ask a clarifying question, especially if the hint given from the interviewer might change your outline dramatically. Now that you have your outline done, you come to the portion of the interview where you need to write some code. And during this time, what you wanna do is make this into a collaborative process. Face the interviewer while writing out and explaining your code and allow them to interact with you. Now the code is done, you feel like you accomplished the task at hand and you're ready to stop your whiteboarding interview. No. Now what you need to do is take your input, usually starting with your happy path, and run it through your code implementation. And how you want to approach this is that at each step of execution, say aloud what is happening and explain what is happening to your input at the current step. And at the end of each step, update the variable values as necessary. And once you finish through the execution of your solution, and you're satisfied with this current implementation, it is time to discuss the time-space complexity of your solution, also known as the big O notation. But as a reminder, both pseudocode to code and the big O notation is gonna be discussed more in depth in future Code Academy videos. So that completes the process. And now I like to talk to you about how to practice whiteboarding, but not with regards to the code or the algorithms and that sort of stuff, but how to effectively communicate, especially when you're not used to communicating. So the idea here, and, and this is a more of a personal belief of mine, is to take everyday items that you might take for granted or you don't think about and whiteboard the process. And what do I mean by that? Well, on the screen, you see this pseudocode for cooking chicken. And you might have never thought about all the steps that are done when you cook chicken from prepping it, turning on the oven, setting the temperature, waiting for it to warm up, placing your chicken on the cooking pan, inserting it in the oven, and so on and so on. If you take the time to practice talking out loud, these steps, this will make you a better communicator. Also, while talking out loud about it, it will make you think about the steps you might have missed. Another practice technique I like to mention is that if you are the type to get nervous talking to other people in these sort of situations, practice in front of a mirror. While practicing whiteboarding, use your reflection to represent your potential interviewers. Imagine potential statements or responses that the interviewer may have and figure out how to handle them. Of course, pick what works for you, but the goal here is for you to ace your interview. Thanks for watching. Now, if you get a chance, head on over to Code Academy and take a look at our technical interview practice. And if you want to get involved, leave a comment below and be sure to like the video and subscribe for future videos. Happy coding.